Hello and welcome to this Boson XM Max product demonstration video. In this video demo, we're going to take a look at the Boson XM Max exam simulation for Cisco T-Shoot 642832. First, be sure you're viewing this video at maximum resolution so that you can see all of the detail. This video was recorded in 720p HD, so check your video player and make sure you're viewing at that resolution. You may also wish to use your video player's full screen mode for better viewing. This exam is a departure from other Cisco certification exams in that the majority of your time on this exam will be spent examining network topologies and device configurations as you work to solve problems. Many Cisco certification exams contain interactive items wherein you are required to interact with small simulated network topologies, but this exam focuses almost entirely on your ability to examine a complex network, locate the source of the problem, and determine what steps need to be taken to correct the problem. Let's load the simulation for T-Shoot 642832 into the BOSUN exam environment and see how it can help you prepare for this new certification exam. Like all other BOSUN XM Max exam simulations, this exam simulation contains three separate practice exams, exam A, exam B, and exam C. Each of these practice exams simulates what you should expect to see on the Cisco 642-832 T-Shoot certification exam. You can go through each exam in either simulation mode or study mode. Simulation mode gives you a timed exam and you're not allowed to see the correct answers or the explanations. We'll look at this exam in study mode, which is not timed, and allows you to know whether you've answered the question correctly or incorrectly, and you can see a detailed explanation that will help you understand why your answer was correct or incorrect. Let's launch exam A and get started. The T-Shoot certification exam consists of two parts. The first part contains a relatively small number of traditional questions. These questions could be multiple choice or they could be drag and drop. These types of questions will be very familiar to you if you've taken a Cisco certification exam before. These types of questions do not require you to examine network topologies or interact with simulated devices. The first of these questions is displayed on the screen in the BOSUN exam environment. I'm going to click the Launch Simulator button so we can take a quick look and see that this particular question is a drag and drop. If I move on to the next question, we can see that it is a more traditional multiple choice question. Let me note here that the number of traditional questions presented in part one of our simulation may be somewhat greater than the number of traditional questions you'll see on part one of the Cisco T-Shoot certification exam. The reason for this is that we want to make sure that we've presented all of the topics that you're likely to see on the certification exam and we didn't feel that we could provide adequate coverage with a small number of questions. Let's move on and take a look at the second part of our XM Max for Cisco T-Shoot exam simulation. I'm going to click the Launch Simulator button to get started with this second part of the exam. Here you can see that we have a new user interface that has a number of elements with which we can interact. The first element that you'll want to notice and pay careful attention to are the instructions that give you information that you'll need in order to navigate through this second part of the exam. The second part of this exam contains a simulated network topology and you'll see that there are buttons here that you can click on to display that topology and there are three overlays that will allow you to examine the layer 2 topology, the IPv4 layer 3 topology, and the IPv6 layer 3 topology. In addition to examining the topology, which you may need to scroll the window in order to be able to examine it completely, in addition to simply examining the visual elements of the topology, you have the ability to gain access to the device consoles so that you can issue various iOS commands that will allow you to gather information that you'll need to troubleshoot the network. To get a better understanding of the new T-Shoot exam, let's work our way through a trouble ticket using this new interface. First, notice that there are 12 trouble tickets, each accessible via the buttons on the right. Notice that the first two tickets are highlighted in red, indicating that I've already worked through these tickets and have marked them closed. In simulation mode and on the T-Shoot certification exam, once a ticket is closed, you cannot reopen it. We're running this exam simulation in study mode, so we can reopen tickets even after we've marked them closed. Before we start our next ticket, let's briefly review the process of working through a ticket. First, we're going to review the instructions. We'll see that there are 12 tickets that refer to a single network topology. As we've seen earlier, Earlier, this topology is presented as three separate overlays. We can look at the Layer 2 
topology overlay. We can look at the layer 3 IPv4 topology overlay, or we can look at the layer 3 IPv6 topology overlay. Let's continue by opening ticket number 3. Notice the change in color after I open ticket number 3. You can see that tickets number 1 and 2 remain red, indicating that they have been marked closed. Ticket 3 is blue, indicating that it is an active ticket, and tickets 4 through 12 are gray, indicating that we're locked out of those tickets until we complete our work with ticket 3. We can see that each trouble ticket begins with a problem statement that defines the issue. In this case, we can see that PC1 is not able to ping the external server at IP address 210.98.76.54. We could begin by looking at the IPv4 layer 3 topology to get an idea of where these devices exist on the network. The problem statement for this ticket tells us that PC1, which is located here, is unable to ping the external server, which is located here. To begin our troubleshooting, we might wish to examine PC1 and see what IP address has been configured there. So to do that, I can simply click on the topology diagram on the icon for PC1, and you'll see that a console window opens, and I could issue the IP config command and I can see that no IP address has been assigned to PC1. I can see that PC1 is in VLAN 22, which is the 101022 network, so that might immediately give me some sense as to where the problem is. I can access any device in the topology by simply clicking on its icon. Its command console will then open, and I can issue the appropriate troubleshooting commands to help get the information that I need to determine what is the problem. After examining the network topology and the device configurations, let's return to the trouble ticket. Each of these trouble tickets is going to follow basically the same format. The first thing that we're going to be asked is which of the devices on the topology is the source of the problem. After identifying the device that we believe contains the source of the problem, we can then move on to the next question. The next question asks us to identify which technology on that device contributes to the problem. And finally, after making that selection, we move on to the third and final question in the ticket, and we're asked to identify which of the following actions would be most likely to solve the problem. We can see that tickets 1, 2, and 3 are highlighted in red, which indicates that those tickets have been completed. At this point, we would move on to ticket 4, 5, 6, and all the way to ticket 12 to complete the exam. After ticket 12 is complete, we would click close, and the trouble ticket simulation would end. At this point, we could end our exam and take a look at grading. Our grading screen gives you a detailed breakdown to let you know how you did. You can see that each item is listed. You can see what kind of item it was, whether you answered it or did not answer it, and whether you answered it correctly or incorrectly. Additionally, there's more detail about the troubleshooting tickets, and we can expand this node and see that the trouble tickets are broken down into a series of tasks. We can see we have ticket one, ticket two, ticket 3 all the way on down to ticket 12 and each ticket is further subdivided into the individual tasks that make up the ticket so you can see exactly where you uh, were right and exactly where you were wrong for each of the trouble ticket scenarios. Thanks for spending a few minutes with us to learn more about our Boson XM Max exam simulation for Cisco T-Shoot 642832. For more information on our entire catalog of Boson exam simulation products and our Boson NetSim Network Simulator, check us out on the web at boson.com.